Here we have a sagittal cross section of the head and neck. Here we have the external nares, which are an opening or a passageway. Then we have the nasal vestibule, this space here. We can't see it on this model, but the nasal septum is a divider between the two nasal cavities. The nasal cavity being this space. Then we have the superior, middle, and inferior nasal conchae or turbinates. Then we have the superior, middle, and inferior nasal meatuses. And then we have the internal nares, which is this opening right here. Next we have the pharynx that's divided up into three regions. We have the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. Also in the pharynx, we have the entrance to the auditory tube right here. Here we have a model of the larynx. We can see the epiglottis here from the side, the epiglottis. We can see the hyoid bone. We can see the thyroid cartilage. We can see the median thyrohyoid ligament, the thyrohyoid membrane, and the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. Then we can see in the front the median cricothyroid ligament and the lateral cricothyroid ligament. On this model, very similar model, we can see the corniculate cartilage and the arachnoid cartilage. Back to this model, we can see the vestibular folds, superior, and the vocal folds, inferior. Then the glottis is this opening, and this is the cricoid cartilage. On this model, we get a blown up view hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, trachea, epiglottis, and where the glottis would be. Here we have a model of the trachea with tracheal cartilage. Down here, we have the carina, and we have two primary bronchi, bronchus singular. And then the second branches are the secondary bronchi, and the third branching is the tertiary bronchi. On the posterior side of the trachea, we have the annular ligament, which secures the trachea to the esophagus. Here we have a model of the lungs. At the top, we have the apex of the lungs. And then the base at the bottom, these are both regions. We have the diaphragm, this muscle. And if we look inside, where the bronchi and vasculature enter the lungs are the hyla, hilum singular. We have the right and left lungs. We have the superior lobe, middle lobe, and inferior lobe of the right lung. We have the superior lobe and the inferior lobe of the left lung. We have the oblique fissure of the right and left lungs. And we have the horizontal fissure. Then on the left lung we have the lingula and the cardiac notch. On this picture we can see the trachea and its branches. Once the branches no longer have cartilage on them they're referred to as bronchioles. And then terminal bronchioles are the last region before the alveoli, which are the sacs that participate in gas exchange with the blood. On this image, we can see the muscle called the trachealis muscle on the bottom of the image. On this image, we can see that the space between the two pleura is the pleural cavity, and that the membrane nearest the lungs is the visceral pleura, and the outer membrane is the parietal pleura. For the endocrine system, we have the hypothalamus, that produces regulatory hormones, antidiuretic hormone, also known as arginine vasopressin, and oxytocin. Here in the bottom left of your screen, you can see the pituitary gland, also known as the hypophysis, and it is divided into the adenohypophysis, the anterior region, and the neurohypophysis, the posterior region. In the adenohypophysis, that produces thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, prolactin, and growth hormone. The pars intermedia produces melanocyte stimulating hormone, and the neurohypophysis 
produces antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. The pars intermedia is in between the anterior and posterior lobes. We have the pineal gland, which produces melatonin. We have the thyroid gland, which produces thyroxine, or T4, and triiodothyronine, or T3. It also produces calcitonin. Here is a view of the thyroid with parathyroid glands in purple. The parathyroid glands produce parathyroid hormone. The pancreas produces insulin and glucagon. The adrenal glands have an outer layer called the adrenal cortex, which produces aldosterone and cortisol, and a medulla on the inside, which produces epinephrine and norepinephrine. Here's another view of the adrenal glands with the cortex producing aldosterone and cortisol, and the medulla producing epinephrine and norepinephrine.